This is part three of three of the Gibb River Road series. And now we're gonna keep on driving to Alquestro, so I'm pretty sure it's another 200 odd case. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So this is part three of three of the Gibb River Road series and I've left Derby. I went all the way out to Drysdale Station and then I went north up to Mitchell Falls, Honeymoon Bay and then back down to Drysdale Station. And yeah, I did all that on one tank. So that was so handy. So I've got a long range fuel tank from Brown Davis and it's 150 litres. If you're gonna go up and you're gonna rely on fuel from Columbaroo, maybe don't because they only operate on Wednesdays and Saturdays. So definitely fill up before you go up there but before I actually keep driving I'm going to try and make it to El Cuestro today but yeah before we do that I actually want to share with you guys some footage of a scenic flight that I did yesterday and it leaves from Drysdale station and it goes all the way up to Mitchell Falls so if you don't want to do the drive and you don't want to wreck your car you can just do a flight and yeah I flew with Shoal Air and it was seriously awesome I learned so many facts about the area and they get nice and low we're even looking for crocs as well so yeah I'll share with you guys some footage of that to begin with. Drysdale Station goes for 1 million acres. This property is seriously huge and there's 10,000 head of cattle here as well. And as we're flying up and over this area, we are in some of the most untouched and remote areas of the Kimberley region. This water is connected to the ocean, so it's salt water. So there's salt water crocodiles and there's sharks. And in that waterfall that we just saw, there actually was a couple of deaths of people that were swimming there and got attacked by crocodiles. So definitely don't want to swim in it, even though it looks so beautiful from up top. You can do cruises as well, but they are on the expensive side. And now we're gonna keep on driving to El Cuestro. So I'm pretty sure it's another 200 odd case. And yeah, this section so far already is way more rocky. So fingers crossed we don't get a flat tire because so far, so good. I cannot get over how absolutely beautiful this spot is. So we're actually not that far away from El Cuestro now. The last 10 or so k's have actually been on gravel. So I feel like I need to put my tires up just a little bit. They're sitting on 20 and 25 and yeah, it's running pretty bad. <laughs> so I think I should put them up a little bit, but I just don't know if it's gonna go back to rock, but I guess I can always put them back down if I need. So let's do that first. <laughs>
of course, as soon as I put my tires back up, we had to go through that river crossing with those big rocks. So I would have liked to have my tires back down for that. But anyway, right after that, it turned to bitumen anyway. I have pulled into the camping section at El Cuestro and it actually is quite busy over there. So I've just gone for a bit of a stroll. But yeah, we'll get up nice and early in the morning and we'll see what's around the area. We have just pulled into a place called Zebedee Springs. Well, there's like a little gate over there. It opens from 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. So I thought I'd get here bright and early. So hopefully we'll have it all to ourselves, if not like fewer people than you would in that middle part of the day. So yeah, it's only maybe quarter to seven at the moment. So I've got a little bit more waiting and then we'll go and have a look. I'm pretty sure it's a thermal pool. So it's like a random spot where there's just heat, a heated pool. I asked the lady yesterday, I was like, does that mean there's Crocs in there? But she said no, but I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'll wait to see if anyone else goes in first because I know a lot of the other um, gorges around here can have crocs in it. But anyway, I think it's all good. So yeah, I'll wait till seven and then we'll go in and have a look. I didn't actually realize how dark it was going to be in here and I didn't adjust my camera accordingly so apologies for the next few images which are a little bit blurry. So that thermal pool ranges between 28 degrees Celsius and 32 degrees Celsius. So it's really warm in there and it's warm because there's a big fault line that runs straight through it. And yeah, so it heats up from underneath the earth, which is really cool. I have just pulled up to Amelia Gorge. So we'll go for a bit of a walk to the end. I think it's a three and a half K return walk, but it's pretty rocky. So it'll probably take a little bit of time. And yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just like a big body of water at the end that <laughs> has crocs. <laughs> Uh, yeah, fresh water crocs are okay, like you're pretty safe with them, but the water will probably be cold anyway. But it'll be good to go for a stroll. <laughs> I did just see a fairly decent sized snake. It just ran straight in front of me, ran, slithered <laughs> right under a rock. So when there's water, heat and rock, you're gonna get snakes around, but they actually listen to vibrations. So if you just sort of stomp like really loud, they don't come out anyway. They're usually actually really scared of you. But yeah, hopefully I will see another one so I can get it on video. But yeah, hopefully not that close. <laughs>
So I have just been walking around looking at all the fish. There is so many in here. It's so cool. But yeah, I'll probably start making my way back to the car pretty soon. But yeah, there's nobody else here, which is also absolutely lovely. I have made it back to the start of Alquestro Station. So that's a wrap of the Gibb River Road series. So there's two more episodes before this if you did want to check it out. And I have absolutely loved the last eight days or so. It is just such an awesome road. If you can do it, definitely do it. I'm going to be finding dust in my car for weeks now. I'm going to go straight to the car wash out at Kununurra and give it a good clean. And then straight after that, I'm actually going to Darwin because I fly out to Queenstown in two days time. My mate Riley convinced me to go snowboarding with her last minute so I'm going out there for 11 days <laughs> but yeah I might make a video out there but if not I'll see you guys back in Darwin anyway but yeah thank you so much for watching I hope you guys really enjoyed it and yeah I will see you in the next one